Hey guys, this is going to be my ranked guide for Furia in our favorite game Paladins Champions of the Realm. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Walnut Yellow and I'm a Grandmaster support and tank player. I make educational content on YouTube, such as guides for Grover and Khan previously, and I also stream on Twitch occasionally. I'm very active on my Discord server and play a lot of Paladins ranked there, so uh, feel free to join via the link in the description. There's a lot of cool players there, and we can hang out. I'm making this guide because Furia is very strong. I think that she's one of the best supports in the game, and one of the best supports for climbing ranked as a support player. I basically climb to GM by playing 90% Grover and Furia in my games. There are a lot of Furia players out there, and a lot of common mistakes and misconceptions about Furia. I'm sure a lot of you guys know that a bad Furia player feels awful to play with. You don't get healed, there's no ults, and the Furia is always dead. On the other end, a good Furia feels amazing to play with. There's huge heals, big ults, and your team just doesn't stop killing the enemy team. Like, non-stop aggression, it feels amazing. So hopefully, in this video, I get to share with you guys how I play Furia, and you guys learn something regardless of what level you play at. Here's a brief table of contents for this guide. We'll start with who Furia is, why we pick Furia, and her abilities. Then we'll go over her talents and playstyle. We'll go through her cards, and I'll show you my favorite decks for her, and her items, where I explain which items to buy and why. We'll go over common mistakes I see a lot of Furia players making, and we'll finish with a map tier list and flank and optank matchups. Alright, let's get started. So who is Furia? Furia is a support in Paladins. The support class is meant to enable their team through healing, damage, and crowd control. You basically want to make your team's job easier. If you're trying to be aggressive, you want to help them be aggressive. If they're trying to run away, you want to help them run away. Basically just help the team do what they're trying to do. So why would you choose Furia instead of some other support champions? Let's see. A few months ago, you would pick Furia because of her high damage output and dual potential. She also had a super aggressive ult that is probably the best ult in the game and she enabled aggression even though she didn't heal that much. This already made her one of the best supports in the game. Now, with her somewhat recent Cherish buffs, she can also throw up huge healing numbers. She probably has the highest burst heals in the game, except for maybe like Mega Potion Pip, and whatever she decides to pocket will not die. If she clears Caught, she can basically just full heal a tank with the click of a button. The only weakness is that she can't heal multiple allies at once. Alright, let's talk about her abilities. So her primary fire is a shotgun, and this is what lets you duel enemy flanks and tanks at close range. Her fire rate basically increases when you heal people. There's a little bar above the, uh, the weapon icon, and as you heal people it goes up, and when you don't heal people for a while it starts ticking down. Uh, basically you want to just keep this bar full by healing people and shooting people all the time because you have a really like high DPS and you want to just utilize it whether you're shooting a shield or shooting the enemy DPS, shooting a tank. Yeah, it's a good weapon. Furio's healing ability is called Kindle Soul, and basically this is a mediocre burst heal along with a 2 second heal over time. The cooldown's pretty short at 3 seconds, and Kronos brings us down to around 1.2 seconds. It's important to cleanse anti-heal with this ability, since it's a burst heal. Uh, so basically, when your teammate gets shot with the, uh, an enemy weapon, they receive reduced healing for about 1.5 seconds. Getting shot more just refreshes this duration, um, and once you're not shot for 1.5 seconds, your health bar turns blue, and you receive full healing values. When you're healing with Furia, it's important to try to cleanse Kot as much as possible so that you can fully heal your teammates. Sometimes this is infeasible, like if your teammate's in a fight, or they need to get around a corner, and they just need a little bit of health, uh, definitely just heal them so they can get to safety or win that fight. The range on this ability is pretty short by default, but is changed by Cherish. Um, and this heal is kind of weird because it only activates when you can see the center of someone's hitbox. Unlike other supports like Damba or Ying, where you can kind of just clip their hitbox with a heal and heal them, Furia needs to be able to see the center of the hitbox for an ally in order to heal them. The ally that gets healed is the one that's closest to the center of your crosshair, so if you're trying to heal someone in a crowd, keep that in mind. Maybe wait for them to spread out a tiny bit, um, because if you miss, like, they die. <laughs> Furia has two defensive abilities, her beam and her wings, so let's talk about her beam first. It's called Pyre Strike, and basically you just throw out a moving beam that goes through walls and floors and ceilings to stun and damage the enemy's hit. This is your primary defensive tool, and it's a deterrent against flanks from diving you. 
It's on a 12 second cooldown, so you can't afford to just spam this. And this can be used to cancel dash abilities like Rom, Ash, or Yag's dashes. And it's also just really good for dueling flanks in general. Her other defensive ability is called Wings of Wrath, and basically you dash backwards while shooting out three homing projectiles that do 200 damage each. This is your mobility and also helps you with surviving dives since it has some burst damage. It's on a 10 second cooldown, so it's also not something you can really spam, but it's really powerful if you use it correctly. You can use this to juke flank shots like EV shooting um, after blinking, or maybe she's trying to ult you. Batu's diving you, you can dash if a Terminus jumps at you for some reason, or like a Yag tries to run at you, Ash, like Ash ult. Uh, it's really powerful, but you have to make sure that you're using it correctly in the right situations. There's also a tech you can do where, uh, I guess there's two techs. Basically, to get where you want to go, just turn your back there and then hit it. You don't always have to be going backwards, right? You can just turn around, hit the button, turn back around, and then you're like going forward. Um, you can also have a, use the tech to switch, like, switch the direction of your orbs, where you shoot the orbs forward. But this requires some really fast flicking, so basically you twist back, twist forward again, and like the orbs shoot forward. Uh, I'll have it playing on screen here, it's kind of weird. Um, but try it out. It's probably harder on a controller, but it's still worth trying. Before we get to our ultimate, Furia also kind of has a passive ability, where she falls slower than other people. I think it's the same as Ying, where she kind of floats to the ground rather than just falling normally. Uh, this can be good because you can travel further distances, especially if you dash off high ground or ult off high ground. Um, but this also means that you're potentially in the air for longer and exposed to enemy fire for longer, so just move accordingly. Now we talk about her ult. It's called Inflame, and it is probably the best ult in the game. Not just in the support class, just like in the game. This is an ult that buffs everyone within 150 units of you, which is usually your entire team to have damage and speed increased by 30% for 7 seconds. This is basically just telling your team, hey, you guys can room really fast and do a lot of damage, just go kill the enemy team. It also completely refills their ammo if they have ammo weapons. You're completely invulnerable to damage and CC while you're casting this. So like while you're kind of spinning around and throwing your sword in the air, uh, you, you can't take damage. Um, this is good for getting away from stuff, and uh, you can also use this like body block ults like BK, but that's a bit harder. While you're ulting and casting, like while the animation is playing, your momentum is also carried. So if you're going up and you hit the button, you keep going up. If you're going down or sideways, like just keep some momentum. So you can use this to gain some vertical mobility. Uh, usually if you wall jump and then ult, you go all the way up onto high ground. You can use this to get up to places like Serpent Beach high ground or Stone Keep high ground. I'm not sure about Split Stone, that's a little too high, but that just allows for some creative mobility options. This is the best ultimate in the game, like I said earlier, because it allows your team to be super aggressive, and it's not something that could be countered. Like, a Grok ult can be countered by a Grover ult if it's played well, or like, a Drogos ult is countered by a Fernando ult, but there's not really anything you can do against a Furia ult, because it's just, it's a team-wide aggressive buff, and even if you Nando ult, like, there's no guarantee that you're ulting the entire team, like, it's just, it's too good. Uh, this is the best ult in the game and why Furia is so good, well, one of the many reasons. Alright, really briefly, let's talk about her talents. There's not much of a discussion, but I'll just go ahead and shoot down Solar Blessing right now. I don't, I'm gonna get some haters in the comments saying that Solar Blessing lets me heal my tank really well. Not really. Like, you're throwing a really slow moving bean into a small location, and your tank has to just stand there and just endure all the damage that people shoot at them too. Um, and also this means that you can't heal your other teammates as effectively. Um, it's just not reliable. It's good in like low elo if you play with coordinated teammates against uncoordinated enemies uh, but it's just it's not good and you're also giving away your defensive cooldown to provide more healing which means that you just kind of die if someone dives you uh, don't run solar blessing it's trash you can honestly heal more with uh, cherish exterminate is fun it's really cancerous but it's fun to play um, but everyone buys resil resilience now because everyone has CC for some reason in this game um, and also, you're just losing out on a lot of healing for just a little bit more damage on your beam. Cherish is the way to go. This basically gives you insane healing because it adds max health percentage healing onto your regular burst heal. So you can heal a tank for like 2.5k with one right click if you, uh, if you cleanse caught. And it also gives you a lot of extra range on Cherish, which means that you can pocket your flanks from across the map. And uh, yeah, this, this talent is the best, and it's also why Furia is throwing up huge healing numbers right now, so always run Cherish. Furia's playstyle and positioning is pretty traditional, with a few exceptions. 
My last guide on Grover was very different in the sense that like, Grover has to position it kind of weirdly to be able to heal his team. Uh, with Furia, that's not the case. You can kind of heal from anywhere on the map as long as you have line of sight. So when the fight starts, you want to play on high ground behind your off tank and just help them take the high ground or defend, high, defend your own high ground. You want to play close enough to the action to do damage and use your beams if the enemy tries to use any kind of mobility. But also don't be too close to where you're just taking too much damage and forcing your tank to like deal for you because that's just taking resources away from your team. There are some games where you're able to play more aggressively, like if the enemy doesn't have much range or if they don't have a lot of like burst fire, you can kind of push up with your team. But there are other times when you have to play safer. If the enemy has like double backline, for example, like a Strix and a Sati, you can't really afford to peek because then you're just going to get bursted down. Uh, so sometimes you have to just kind of play safe and focus on healing and using your ults when it comes up to be aggressive. But other times you can kind of run it down with your off tank. Your ults are really good for initiating fights or finishing fights. Like if it's a 5-5 and you ult, your team has an advantage. If it's a 3-3 and you ult, your team also has the advantage. It's also really good for retakes. So like if your team loses the mid fight and uh, they're trying to get back to the point and get overtime, your ult is really good for that. Um, and don't be afraid to move in and help clean up team fights. Like there's some supports where they kind of are stuck in the back line because they don't do as much damage like Genos or Corvus. Uh, not really Corvus, Corvus does a lot of damage, but like Genos or like Lilith, Ray, I guess. But Furia is really good at just running into the enemy backline with your off tank and just like cleaning up kills. Don't be afraid to take duels that you know you can win, but always have a way out if things go wrong. This is kind of hard to just say, but basically like if there's an Androxus running at you, you can take the duel and uh, try to beam him and ego him. If it doesn't work, make sure you have your dash and you're able to dash to your team. Make sure you're dashing to your team so that you're not dashing away and forcing them to kind of cross mountains to try and save you. Um, yeah. All right, let's go over Furious cards. So let's go over these cards first. I think that all her beam cards are, to be honest, not very good. Um, not because they're bad, but just because there's really good cards. Like Sunderation, sure, but it's really short values and then people are getting Riesel if they're getting hit by your beam anyway. Some people like this card, I can see why, but in my opinion, I've never really had a Wrath problem, so I don't run it. Reduce the cooldowns of Wings of Wrath after hitting an enemy with Pyro Strike. I don't really spam my wings. Uh, some people do, but I wouldn't recommend it. So these reset cards, especially on something that's kind of hard to hit, I wouldn't really say they're worth. This is not bad, um, especially if you're playing on maps with chokes like tunnels. Uh, this kind of guarantees a hit, but if you aim your beam well, I think you can get your hits anyway. Fire Siphon, I think it's glitched right now where it heals you through Cot, like it doesn't get affected by Cauterize at all, so it could be like a fun little card to run at 5 and you just get like a heal every time you hit someone with wings, but I don't know, I don't really need it. Uh, reduce the cooldowns of, ring of uh, Wings of Wrath, this could be useful as a filler, um, I think personal preference. Rush's Path is not really useful because you're not trying to like cross the map with the wings anyway. Um, this one's not bad, actually, if you're playing some kind of uh, beam build. Um, reduce the cooldown of Pyre Strike for up to 4 seconds. Um, this is fun if you're playing Exterminate, you can just throw out beams repeatedly, especially once you build Chronos. I don't run it in my primary builds, but I can see why you would run it. And now we get to her good cards. So these three cards, I think, are some of her best. Burning Oath, I always run this at 5. Um, this just lets you stay in the fight and like do a lot of damage and get close to people, and then just also sustain yourself really well. I think if you don't run this at 5, you need to at least run it at 4, but I just recommend running at 5. This just lets you do so much more. Inner Fire, I like this one a lot. I run it as a filler because every time I heal, I get one shot. I can just shoot more people. There are times when Furia is shooting people and then she needs to like reload and they get away. Uh, I like it as a filler. I started playing with Light Forge recently. I forgot what it used to do. I think it like healing someone reduced the cooldown on your beam or something like that. I forgot. But basically now it just buffs your movement speed. I run this at 5 in one of my builds and it's really good for tanks, especially like Inara or Terminus or Fernando, Atlas, where if they just get a speed boof, uh, <laughs> boof, speed buff, they get to um, just run into the enemy team and be really aggressive. It also buff, uh, buffs your movement speed. I'm stuttering a lot, sorry. It buffs your movement speed so you can also get around corners faster and be more aggressive with Light Forge. I like it a lot. Light of Dawn is, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure how I feel about this card just yet because I think the values are kind of low, but basically 
if the enemy team doesn't have Wrecker, it gives your team like extra HP pretty much. But since Wrecker is so prevalent nowadays, because so many tanks have it, I don't really think this is worth running. But I still have to experiment with this a little bit. I don't like this at all. Um, there's better cards to get ammo, and eliminations are not guaranteed. I always build builds for a uh, 5v5. And the second you get value from this card, it's already like a 5v4 or a 5v3. Um, it's also like ammo on elims, like no one needs that. I, I run this card at 5 or 3, depending on the build, but I like running it at a high value because it's also it does the same thing as Burning Oath, where it just lets you stay in the fight for a lot longer, survive dives, especially like people are going to be jumping at you because you're healing people a lot, um, and you just want to stay alive, HP is always good. If Fury had a DR card, I would run that instead, but HP is also just, like, amazing. I run this card as a filler, because more ammo is good. And, uh, this card is nice, but I personally don't really have a Wrath problem, so I run it really low, or, um, not at all. I know some people who run this at 4, and they just kind of go sicko mode on the enemy backline, and just keep firing. Uh, I mean, suit yourself. I think it's okay. I think there are better cards. So here are my two builds. The primary ones. This one's experimental, this one's just for fun. Uh, my main build, basically HP 5, self healing 5, and then ammo and wrath fillers. Um, it's very standard, it's like the same as DPS Furia builds basically, but I just heal people and shoot things and uh, this helps me do that. My second build is the speed build, uh, self sustain 5 and HP 3, same ammo and wrath fillers, but then I have light forge 5, so this is what I have. Um, an aggressive team, like, or aggressive tanks, I guess, like Inara wants to walk at people, Terminus wants to walk at people, Atlas wants to walk at people. Um, I've honestly been playing this build a lot more recently, and it's been working out a lot better. Um, so I don't think you can go wrong with either of these, but I think start with this one, and if you feel like you want some speed, try this one. You can't really go wrong with either. Um, sometimes this is useful for, like, helping your tanks get touch in overtime and stuff like that. 1.5 seconds of movement speed doesn't sound like much, but it actually does make a difference. Yeah, this one's just shielding. It's experimental. I haven't tested it much yet, but I don't really think it's that good. Uh, this one's just for beam resets if you want to have fun, or if you're playing like Solar Blessing and Casuals. Uh, yeah. So anyway, that's her builds and cards. Let's talk about items you should be buying now. So first and foremost, always buy Kronos. I like to get to Kronos too before I buy anything else, but sometimes I buy morale boost. Kronos basically lets you heal more, um, you also like throw your beam out and wings more, but that's not really the focus. You heal more and you can heal a lot. So Kronos always comes first, and then you also just generate your ult faster with Kronos because you're healing more. Morale boost is the second item I get, like all the time, because Furia's ult is the best in the game and morale boost kind of lets you just spam it every other fight, or maybe even every fight if you're doing a lot of damage and getting ult charge. After that, the items are more conditional. Uh, Resilience, if there's flanks or tanks that have CC and they're just shooting you with it. Obviously like a Vatu ult, or like EV, um, like Mavel, I guess, not really EV, but Mavel. Um, resilience is good. Haven or Veteran, if you're taking a lot of damage. I usually don't need these, but sometimes it's nice. Illuminate, if you're against a, a Sky or like a crazy Strix Shaolin. And Wrecker, if you need to. Uh, I don't really buy Nimble on Furia, because I find that Light Forge gives me the speed buff I need. And I'm kind of just in a same in one position, and if I really need to rotate somewhere, I use my wings or I just follow my tank. I never really need to move like 20% faster. Now I'm gonna talk about some of the common mistakes I see with a lot of Furia players, and this is like from bronze all the way till masters. I see a lot of Furia gameplay. The first and obvious one is that people spam beams and dashes for damage. Like I see a lot of Furias mount up and like they're in safe positioning, and they just throw their beam and their wings out and uh, hope that they hit someone on the other side of the map and like or just hit someone on the enemy high ground and like that's cool if it hits but even if it does it doesn't necessarily set up an opportunity and you're also just setting yourself up for a free like ruckus dive or vatu dash or something like that you know uh furia is primarily just shooting and healing and all her other abilities are defensive so keep that in mind um your dash damage does 60 or uh, not 60 600 damage and that's not a lot in like a poke fight with a 5v5, but it's a lot in a 1v1. So it's a lot more value to do 600 damage to uh, like a Lex or a Zin running at you than like 600 damage when you're, um, your homing orbs just hit someone across the map. I personally use these abilities extremely conservatively. 
Uh, I hold onto the beams until I know that I can confirm a hit with them. I may not always get random stuns across the map, but I know that I have my beam ready whenever I need it. So if I'm getting dived, I have my beam. If I need to cancel an ability, I have my beam. Um, it actually allows me to play more aggressively because I know that I always have my def defensive cooldowns ready. To kind of build off of that point, people say Furia is really good into flanks, and there's a reason people say that. I see a lot of players saying that, oh, they have like aggressive flankers, I'm going to pick Furia and fuck them over. And then they just spam their beams and wings and then kind of don't understand when they lose the duel. Furia is good into flanks because she has two really good defensive cooldowns. She has a beam that shuts down flanks, a, like a dash that does damage to flanks, and a really good weapon. And if you just spam two of those away, you only have your really good weapon to deal with flanks that have abilities. Um, so yeah, don't spam your beams, uh, don't spam your wings. I know some people are saying that uh, you don't spam your wings or your beams and you're not like getting the max value out of Furia, but I don't really think that's true. And I play this way and hit GM, so it, it works. <laughs> uh, yeah. Another mistake I see a lot is KDA ulting. This happens more often in like diamond and below games where um, people are not as aware of like the whole team fight and it's just like an awareness thing. But basically when they're getting pushed and they're about to die, but you already lost two teammates and it's like a 3v5, they ult to try and survive when in reality you're not winning that fight anyway. And it's better off to just die and then respawn with the ult and then kind of retake the fight using your ult. It's kind of the same with Fernando ult, right? You want the Fernando, Fernando to ult early so your team can take advantage of it rather than after people have already died. Same with Furia ult, try to use it early instead of saving it just to like KDA ult. This next mistake is kind of similar to the one I talked about in my Grover guide, and that's retreating to your team rather than just retreating backwards. There are a lot of Furia players and just support players in general who run backwards towards their spawn when they get pushed, when this isn't always the best move. It's, like, it's usually not the best move to be honest, because you're the support usually behind the rest of your team, and if you're getting pushed, that means that if you back up, you're just going to be separated from your team and they're not going to be able to protect you. Using your wings, you want to just try to dash to your off tank or your DPS, and hopefully they can protect you. If you need to go a little bit further, you can ult to your team. Um, but like, try not to waste your ult like we talked about. Just use it if you can survive, and then try to go to your team so they can help you. This last mistake is kind of Furia specific, but also I guess applies to maybe Grover and Damba, I guess. And that's playing too far back. Uh, if you play too far back, you're not with your team, so you can't beam to cancel abilities, you can't like just do damage at close range and you're basically just relegated to healing at a distance and poking and you have a shotgun so it doesn't do much damage at range either you're not grover like i said earlier you want to kind of play closer to your team and just be in the fight but not too far in the fight to where you're taking unnecessary damage and this is kind of tricky to balance because traditional support positioning just tells you to kind of keep a safe position and like support your team but you can do so much more as furia and if you kind of sit back and like just peek through a window to heal your team that's not like the max value out of Furia. So try to play a bit further up with your off tank. Um, don't be in front of your team, just be behind your team, but not too far behind and uh, try to do more. I covered a lot about healing prioritization in my Grover guide. So if you wanna hear about that, go check that out, link in the description. Um, so now I'm just gonna talk about some tips for Furia specifically. When you're throwing your beam, try to make sure that it's a confirmed hit. And this isn't just like in a vacuum, like try to use your environment to your advantage. Like if someone's chasing you, wait around a corner and then beam them. Or if people are fighting in a tunnel, throw it straight down the middle so that they, there's no chance that they can dodge it. Try to throw it through walls so people don't see it coming as much. And uh, yeah, like you just learn by limit testing with this ability. The possibilities are honestly endless um, and you can get really creative with this. You can also like shoot a beam up someone's ass if they're above you, because um, it just goes straight up. Um, or below you, like it's especially useful on stone keep and like timber mill. Don't die to heal. You want to be close to the combat, but like not too close. And if you over peak, you're gonna die. So don't die to heal someone. Um, and be aggressive and limit test. Basically, with Furia, you're like a DPS and a support all in one. And to get the most value out of her, you need to learn how to be aggressive without being punished for it. So be aggressive, limit test. You may die, you may feed, but you will learn. And eventually, you'll learn the balance between being aggressive and being safe. And uh, yeah. Furia has some really bad maps, but other than that, she's pretty good. She basically thrives when it's a pretty open map and she has good sight lines to heal since she needs line of sight to heal people. Ascension Peak is really good for her. Um, 
you can just kind of see everyone from anywhere and it's just really good especially when you run cherish grover is just as good here but i think furia has a bit more pocket potential bazaar is a bit tricky since uh there's not much like safe space you kind of get shot from wherever like it's too open almost and also the railings kind of get in the way i think grover is better here or uh corvus genos um apparently ray's really good here furia is kind of rough here um just because the railings block the center of the hitbox like i said earlier about like needing to see the center of the hitbox to heal um yeah but the beams are really easy to use on this map especially on like the catwalks here bright mosh is a really good furia map um you do a lot of damage and you have good sight lines and you can play really aggressive since it's a short range map and your shotgun just does max damage it's also really easy to hit beams on this map and you can use your ult to get back onto high ground here um, if you're getting pushed. Dawn Forge is very bad for Furia because there's so many twists and turns and you can barely see your team half the time. It's always better to uh, play a pocket support or like Grover and just heal through walls. Fish Market is good for Furia. I like her a lot here. Um, I don't like the map, but she's good for it's good for Furia. Long sight lines, uh, a lot of pocket potential. You don't do as much damage unless you play like on the inside here, I think the market side. But like the healing is fine. Frog Isle is also pretty good if you play in danger, which is like the path on the side. You can do a lot of damage and you have really good lines of sight to heal people. Um, yeah. Frozen Guard, I think, is honestly her best map, which is kind of weird because Frozen Guard is kind of broken into two sections and they're very different. So on the push and defense, it's very wide open and uh, like Grover would probably be better because you can just throw like huge axes down range but for the mid fight everything's really crowded but also like constrained to two lanes it's hard to explain but grover like can heal fine but doesn't do any damage there and furia can heal a lot and do a lot of damage uh because she can kind of see everything while not being shot from everywhere um so i think that frozen guard is actually one of furia's best maps because she wins the mid every time even if she may not win the push or the defense and like the mids are what matters you know three three like no one cares about the push or defense you want to win the mid ice mines is one of her worst maps because you can't see anything without being shot by everything <laughs> i'm saying a lot of anythings and everythings um ice mines is just hard to play furia like you go to heal one person and you find that you can't see anyone else um her beams are easy to hit but like i think that grover Pip, honestly, they're the two best supports on this map, maybe Lilith. Uh, yeah. Jaguar Falls is pretty good for Furia if your team plays in two lanes. If they play in three, they're kind of screwed because you can't reach them. Um, but she's good at running down either of the off lanes with your team, and she can also just heal pretty well on this map. Serpent Beach is like, it's fine. Um, you don't have any vertical mobility outside of your ult, so it's kind of hard to get back onto high ground unless you take long rotation maps, but that's kind of the same for most supports outside of Corvus, and I guess Grover, she, he has a vine. Uh, Serpent Beach is kind of just more team comp dependent, you know, like if you need to pocket your aggressive team, play Furia. If you want to like just be able to rotate and just play more passively, play Grover. Shattered Desert is fine. Uh, it's a really open map, not much to say about it. Like. It's really open though, so you can get dive from any directions, so it's especially important that you just kind of hold on to your defensive cooldowns, like I said. Splitstone is good, but also bad. Um, <laughs> I'm being really kind of vague right now, but like it's just hard to position in general on Splitstone, especially if you don't have vertical mobility. Like Grover is hard to play because he has his radius constraint, like he can't heal people across the map, but he also can go anywhere he wants with his vine. Furia can pocket someone from anywhere, basically, so if you want to start high ground, you can kind of heal everyone. But you also can't really go anywhere once you get dived, you just kind of have to keep running away and kiting. Um, so, like, it is not bad, it's just, it's not amazing either. Um, yeah. Stone keeps fine, it's open enough to where you can heal everyone if you need to, but also close range enough to where your weapon and your beam and dash kind of, like, have max value. Timber Mill is good because Cherus just gives you extra range and you can heal everything. Uh, it's just kind of hard for you to get peeled for, so you have to play really close to your team all the time. Um, otherwise, someone who dives you can just kind of juke your beam out because there's not really much uh, cover and just like kill you by yourself. And it's important to stay on high ground because once you drop, it's a long time before you can get back upstairs. 
Warder's Gate is fine. You just have to keep rotating with Warder's Gate. Uh, it's kind of hard to stay in one place, especially if the fight's going on, because t people tend to chase each other around in Warder's Gate a lot. So you just have to stay moving. Um, use your dash for mobility, but don't leave yourself exposed. Um, you kind of start on one of the sides, but as the fight evolves, you kind of end up playing around underneath point. It gets a little hectic, just like try to heal your team and stay alive. Yeah. Let's talk about her flank matchups really fast, and then I'll go over some of the off-tank matchups. I don't really think the others are relevant, because they're not supposed to be super close to you. Uh, so Vatu is honestly not that bad. Like, obviously a good Vatu is going to roll you, but you can stay alive against Vatu, like, pretty well. Uh, you can, like, dash to get away from his, uh, like, his shots. Like, juke one shot, and then kind of just half his damage potential. If your wings hit him, that's good damage. You can always shoot him, because he's, like, he doesn't have any shields, so you just keep shooting him. If you hit a beam on him, uh, if you hit a beam on him, he's pretty much dead. Uh, but like Vatu's just honestly like the best flank in the game, and he's just a pain. But like, it's not impossible to deal with him as Furia. Same with Androxus, he just kind of shoots you and then dashes at you. Um, there's not much you can do against his ult, especially because he has four shots and you have one dash. Um, you can ult to immunity his ult, but that's kind of a high cost. Um, best bet is just play by cover, um, so that he has to get really close to you and where you can beam him. Same with Vatu, honestly. Maeve is not bad, just try to like juke out her shots. Like if she's about to shoot, change the direction you're strafing. Just be a bit more like conscious in like the way you're strafing. Uh, try to dodge out her boosted daggers if she's playing Cat Burglar. And uh, get resilience for her ult, otherwise she gets a free just kill on you every time. Just shoot her in the air. Um, yeah, you just gotta shoot her more than she shoots you. It's um, it's not really like a, a good matchup, but it's not terrible either. You never really get a chance to be a beam Maeve because she's always kind of at a distance unless she's like trying to pounce on you, which is kind of weird. Zin is honestly a pretty hard matchup because he just keeps coming. He's kind of like the cockroach flank, and he can like deflect your wings because he can see it coming. He just counters it and then just shoots it right back at you. Um, and then he can whirl to like close the distance after you after you dash and then you can like kind of ult you if you try to get away or he just like damages you and like he blocks your shots because he has a deflect um you can get away from him but like you have to keep getting away from him because he just keeps coming koga is very annoying honestly he dashes through your beam um and like he usually has a pocket so he just keeps coming at you just stay by your team and try to like juke him around cover moji's easy just beam her outside of her uh magic barrier and like you can just juke her or you can use your ult to go high ground um, Moji's not that bad, just like make sure you're not stuck in a room with them. Lex is pretty hard. Um, the only chance that you have of beating Lex is hitting a beam on him or like dashing around a corner because um, he's so fast and he just does so much damage at close range. Uh, yeah. Seven is kind of weird. It's kind of like Mave where you just have to play in cover and just like don't take too much poke damage because they can always just like run at you and then finish you off and then run back out. Um, so yeah. Play behind cover and just shoot him whenever you can and get resale for his ult. Same with Maeve. Vora is pretty easy, honestly. Um, she doesn't do that much damage. And like whenever she does her little like nosedive thing, you can just beam her after that. Uh, try not to beam before because they have like she has an immunity thing. Um, yeah, and also just don't take too much poke damage. She has a lot of good range damage. Talus is probably your one of your worst matchups along with like Sky. Um, like Talus is just a little killing machine and he's so fast, especially when he's running like uh this card. Yeah, once he's running that card, he just kinda like runs past your beam. He just like jukes it and you don't really have a chance of hitting him. The one way you survive against Talus is just by playing with your team. So if you're getting peeled for you probably survive. But also playing around corners. Cause um Talus is usually just trying to W key you and like juke you out. But if you can get in a place where your beam is guaranteed to hit him, that kind of puts him in a tough spot. Uh, so play around corners, it's like pretty easy on warders, but it's kind of harder on some other maps where it's more open, like uh, Shattered Desert. If you hit a beam on Talus, he usually teleports away, or you get a lot of damage on him and kill him. Um, but other than that, you're kind of screwed if he just starts uh, overcharging you. Eevee is not bad, it depends on the Eevee. Um, I guess all these flanks depend on the player. But if you juke Eevee's first shot, she can usually not kill you until she blinks back again. And that usually buys you time to heal up with um, your self-heal cards or get to your team. Um, yeah, just like try to save your dash for when she blinks and shoots at you. If you dodge one shot, you're pretty much good. 
Same with Buck. If he jumps at you, you gotta dash out of his jump. If you get bounce house, you're kind of fucked. Um, but if he jumps at you and you dash away, you hit him with 600 and he doesn't get the bounce on you, then you're kind of set and you can kind of duel him from there and maybe hit a beam on him or just like go to your team. Sky is tricky because by the time you're fighting Sky, it's already too late because she always like has first shot advantage on you basically. Um, get Illuminate and just be ultra aware of where he where she is so that you're never like caught up by surprise. If you can, ask your team to call out where the sky is, um, but usually you can kind of tell just by the big like reveal sounds she has. Um, Caspian is like not that good, um, but he chases pretty well and he has a cripple or a stun on demand, which is really annoying. So get some Rizal if it's bothering you, but shouldn't be that big of a problem. And he has no way to um, to dot to immunity your beam. So I think the worst matchups here are honestly like Talus and Sky. Now let's talk about the off tanks. Um, for a lot of these, you just kind of got to play out of their range. You have heals across the map, and you do, do like decent poke damage. So just don't get hooked by Koa. You can kind of farm headshots on him otherwise. You can shoot Khan or like beam him because his shield doesn't block it. Uh, and if you ult, the team just melts through Khan. Um, don't get ulted by him though, because if he gets an ult on you, that's like game over for your team. The most common problems are probably going to be like Ruckus, um, other die times, Ruckus and Azan, maybe Rom. Uh, Ruckus dashes at you and like he usually gets Rizal after he gets like Master Riding. Um, just try to kite him around corners until your team can protect you. You're not going to win a 1v1 against him unless you're like absolutely insane and he's dog shit. Um, so yeah, beam him, dash away, try to avoid his rockets and then just like make him waste his dashes chasing you. Like go around corners and stuff because he has really slow speed when he's shooting. Um, so go around corners, force him to use dashes and after that just like run to your team. Hopefully they help you. Rom is like... If he's running, beam him. If he's not running, just get away and force him to run. And if he's trying to run, just beam him anyway. Uh, you're not going to win against him, but you can get away from him pretty easily. Atlas is kind of hard because there's nothing really you can do about it unless you're really close to him. But if you're really close to him, he just kills you. So just kind of wait for his wall to go down and shoot him. Um, if he's chasing you, just like dash away. Um, force him to use his rewind and go back to where he was or uh, your team gets a kill on him. Terminus isn't really going to be running at you. If you're getting run at by a Terminus, you're kind of just standing on low ground and getting like farmed. That's not really good. Just stay on high ground. Ash is pretty easy to deal with if you have a team next to you. If she puts her shield down and just kind of advances slowly at you, and like she's not getting shot at, chances are you're just on the wrong side of the map. Um, but if she's trying to dash away or dash into you, you can um, you can beam her. One common way of uh, Screwing over Ash is when she's trying to dash on the point for a touch, just like throw a beam in her direction and like hopefully stun her. You can also stun her out of her ult before it lands and potentially deal enough damage to her where she dies before she is able to land it a second time. Um, I'm getting DMs, dang. Yagarath, like just shoot her and like beam her when she's trying to accelerate. Don't waste your beam early. I think that's a common trend with a lot of these tanks, like the dash tanks, like Ash, um, Yag. Just beam them after they're about to dash. Azan is probably the most difficult because he has good poke, so he can poke you out if you're not careful. And he can also wall you in and just kind of box you up. So you want to just kind of be careful and then stick next to your team so that the Azan is never able to just kind of bear his full weight onto you. Make sure that there's a tank between you and Azan. Torvald, just don't get nullified by Torvald. You kind of shit on him otherwise. Uh, yeah, so those are the off tank matchups. Are there any flank? Are there any like DPS matchups? Um, try not to get marked by Tyra, because uh, Tyra kind of just marks you, and in the flank just gets 15% damage on you. Um, I think with DPS, it's like you don't really duel them. You just um, try to minimize the damage you're taking and like do damage to them when they're not shooting at you. That's pretty much all I have for this Furia guide. Hopefully, you guys learn something and can go out and get some wins with Furia. I think she's insane and one of the best supports for carrying ranked games. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below, or if you want to hang out with me or like play with cool Paladins players, make sure to join my Discord server. I'm very active there, and if you have any questions, you can also ask them there. This video is probably a bit shorter than the Grover guide because I covered a lot of support fundamentals there that I didn't go over again. So if you want to see those, try to check out the Grover guide linked in the description below. But yeah, that's all I have. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye.